John Gill, Expedition of the Bible, Revelations chapter 1, verse 16, reading first from the King James Bible, quote, And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength, unquote. John Gill, quote, And he had in his right hand seven stars, the angels the pastors of the seven churches, Revelations chapter 1, verse 20. The ministers of the gospel are compared to stars because of their efficient cause, God who made them and fixed them in their proper place and for his glory. And because of the matter of them being the same with the heavens, so ministers are of the same nature with the churches. And because of their form light, which they receive from the sun, so preachers of the gospel receive their light from Christ. And because of their multitude and variety, so the ministers of the gospel are many and their gifts different and chiefly for their usefulness, to give light to others, to direct to Christ, and point out the way of salvation, and to rule over the churches. Nor was it unusual for the Jews to compare good men to stars and to the seven stars. The Targumist says, the seven lamps in the candlestick, and to the seven stars, to which the righteous are like. These are held and led in Christ's right hand, which shows that they are dear unto him, and highly valued by him, that they are his in his possession, at his disposal, whom he uses as his instruments to do his work, and whom he beholds and sustains, that they may not sink under their burdens, and whom he preserves from failing, and so holds them that they stand fast in the faith, and not be carried away with the errors of the wicked. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, which designs the word of God. See Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17. This comes out of the mouth of Christ. It is the word of God and not of man. And is a sharp sword, contains sharp reproofs for sin, severe threatenings against it, and gives cutting convictions of it. And it is a, is a two-edged one. And by its two edges may be meant law and gospel. The law lays open the sins of men, fills with the grief and anguish for them. Yea, not only wounds but kills. And the gospel cuts down the best in men, his wisdom, holiness, righteousness, and carnal privileges, in which he trusts in the worst in man, teaching him to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, or the word of God may be so called, because it, it means both of saving and of destroying. It is the savior of life unto life to some, and the savior of death unto death to others, and it is both an offense and defensive weapon. It is the defense of the saint against Satan, false teachers, and every other enemy, and an offensive one to them, which cuts them down, destroys them, and their principle. So this may mean that the judicial sentence of Christ unto the wicked, which will be a fighting against them, and a smiting of the nations of the world. See Revelation chapter 2, verse 16, which the Jews interpret of the law. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength at noonday. Such was the countenance of Christ in his transfiguration. See Matthew chapter 17, verse 2. And in Zion's here, the manifestation of himself and the glories of his person, and in the riches of his grace, who is the Son of righteousness that arises from his people with light, heat, joy, and comfort. See the phrase in Judges chapter 5, verse 31, which the Jewish writers understand of the strength of the sun, both in the summer solace and in the middle of the day or at noon, at which time its heat is strongest and it usually shines brightest. The design of the metaphor is to set forth the glory and majesty of Christ. End of John Gill, Revelation chapter 1, verse 16.